Blackmore Park Kart Circuit plays host to the second annual UK Kart Race of Champions. Once again, a £1,000 prize purse is up for grabs as drivers battle it out for the glory of naming themselves the UK's best hire kart racer. We're just a few minutes away from the winner-takes-all grand final in the heavyweight class. But before we get underway with the action, let's hear how the 18 competitors made it through with this report from Dave Goddard. The field was split into four groups for the heats, with each group racing three times to qualify. Group 2 was the first of the heavyweight groups, and their opening heat saw a clear victory for Club 100 driver Ryan Sandall. Lone DJ Motorsport man Sam Luke stopping the fight for second, and Cobbs Kart Sports Chris Pebbody in third. Buckmore Park's own Alex Jones and Chris Zakiewicz almost scored a 1-2 in heat 2, but Michael Gibbons just managed to split them, while the third heat saw Luke's pull away from pole for victory, with SERKC's Gavin Williams topping a fine fight for second, at one stage holding off a train of seven carts in the closing stages. Pebbody and Jones also showed their credentials here with third and fourth, just ahead of Sandal, but Zakiewicz and Gibbons both struggled in the pack. The highlight was definitely Williams' efforts in the number 11 cars, holding off the number four of Pebbody in third place. A train of carts built up behind them in a superb dice, but it was Luke's who took the clear victory. Group four, meanwhile, began with a clear win for Anwar Smith of Club 100, with BRKC's Ed White pipping Joe Bailey for second. Heat two seeing a stunning drive by White from the back of the grid to just beat Michael Whitaker and Bailey to the line, with Smith also charging through for fourth. The third heat saw a terrific three-way fight for victory, with Cobb Kart Sports' Mark Mason on the number four, soaking up the pressure to hold off the rapid White and Smith for the win by less than one-tenth of a second, but it was a very close affair indeed, with three determined drivers putting on a wonderful display of kart racing around the Buckmore Park circuit. White and Smith certainly established themselves as favourites for the event, but Whitaker struggled in this third heat from the back, while Bailey was also mired in the midfield, and this would affect his points position in the final reckoning. With the points combined, White was clear at the top with a win and two seconds ahead of Smith and Jones, heat winner Sandal and Luke's next, while Mason was seventh behind Pebbody, Bailey, Gibbons and Whitaker completing the top ten. Gavin Williams got the last automatic A final place in 13th, courtesy of a tie-break on lap times. The top five from the B final will join the back of the grid for the main event, and as expected, it was a frantic affair with no kart racer able to break away at the front of the field. Somehow, however, Cov Kart Sport driver Justin Elliott managed to hang on in front all the way on the number 11 with Zakiewicz on his tail. But it was a whole column of carts building up behind them and one false move could have put anyone through into the qualifying places. Elliott brilliantly hung on in front all the way. He was unable to make a break from the baying pack behind. Qualifiers were completed by Ashley West, Maurice McGeoch and Mike Smith who all finished within less than a second of the winner in a magnificent affair. Exactly half a second was Elliott's margin of victory and the next three covered by less than half a second, five of them going through to the main event, the A final. The heavyweight final of the 2020 Kart Race of Champions. A look at the grid. Six different winners during the heats. The top five all took a single victory on their way to this final. On pole position, Ed White representing BRKC. He was third in their national championships back in 2014. This is his debut in the Kart Race of Champions. He was comfortably top scorer during the heats. Alongside him, P2, Anwar Smith, Third in the inaugural kart race of champion staging last year. Now looking to go one better. The Club 100 regular, the winner of Heat 2. Row 2 features Alex Jones, the home man representing Buckmore Park. He was the Sprint League champion and runner-up in the BP Pro Series in 2019. He won Heat 3. Alongside him, Ryan Sandal, former Buckmore Park Ironman champion representing Club 100. The 22-year-old won the opening race of the day. Row three, Sam Lukes, the 41-year-old DJ Motorsport regular, making his debut in the kart race of champions. He was the winner of Heat 5 alongside him in the number 14 kart, Chris Pebbody. Row four, Mark Mason, also a race winner. He took Heat 6, lines up alongside Joe Bailey. And row five includes Michael Gibbons and Michael Whitaker. 18 drivers in total, including the top five from the B final. We are underway with the heavyweight final here at the 2020 kart race of champions. 
drag race down to the first turn and it's Ed White who will lead them from pole position slotting in into second place Anwar Smith then it's Alex Jones bit of a gap immediately built up to the drivers from fourth position down Ryan Sandal holding fire as Anwar Smith chases the tail of Ed White attempted a move into hairpin one it was defended against successfully by the number 12 cart of Ed White our pole sitter who leads us through the S's for the first time Anwar Smith on his tail nothing separating the top three nose to tail with Alex Jones on the tail of the two early race leaders bit of a gap then developing from fourth position down the number 15 of Ryan Sandal trying to get a little bit of daylight now they go side by side up towards Garda Alex Jones got the better run coming off Paddock Ben but couldn't exploit it and remains in third position for the moment that dicing through Garda at the bottom of the circuit has enabled Ryan Sandal to peg his way back onto the tail of the top three then the daylight that I was talking about that now extends behind fourth position to uh, Sam Lukes and Lukes has got company from the likes of Chris Pebbody and Mark Mason the uh, top eight positions unchanged on this opening lap then as they go side by side once again for second position Alex Jones still looking for a way through on Anwar Smith he'll attempt to make his move coming down towards the S's but not quite a long side coming off hairpin two the top four pretty much all tied together now at this stage of the race as they come down the hill through the same sweep through Pullman's and through Paddock Bend still with Ed White leading them on lap number two it was side by side last lap around Garda and it is again Anwar Smith Moved to the mid-track just to defend against Alex Jones. That forces the number 11 cart out wide. There was an opportunity for Ryan Sandal to get through, but he couldn't quite make a move stick as they uh, came off uh, turn 11 and up towards Cafe Curve. So White leads it then at the end of lap two, ahead of Anwar Smith. Alex Jones still close in behind. Less than a second covering the top four throughout this race so far. Sam Lukes is bringing himself back into play as they go side by side for the race lead. Anwar Smith finally unleashes his move into hairpin one picks off Ed White who's moved off the racing line he recovers nicely across the pass of Alex Jones but that is our first major change of position up at the front of the field and it's Anwar Smith who's looked racy from the very start of this grand final who is already through on Ed White can White make his move back through as they head in towards Garda no he's defending to the inside line on Alex Jones Smith takes a very wide entry there almost made himself vulnerable to attack from behind but he wants to ensure the best possible run up the hill and in towards turn number one Smith your new race leader then ahead of White then it's Jones Sandal and Luke's right with him and in fact Chris Beverly is going with the leaders now so we've got a group of six drivers all separated by just 1.1 seconds at the end of lap number three Jones up to the outside into hairpin one Sandal will come through in to third position Jones though will have the inside now for hairpin two ducking and diving alongside the pair of them Sam Lukes is going to make two moves in one go to go from fifth to third that's a great move from the number six cart of Sam Lukes so uh, Lukes who's been gaining ground on this lead group is now very much in and amongst this up in P3 Ed White hassling and harrying Anwar Smith as they head in towards Garda once again but still looking over his shoulder doesn't seem particularly confident coming off Paddock Bend and certainly not enough to make a move as Chris Pebbody now forces his way up the field you can see him side by side with Ryan Sandal who's hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging positions on at lap number four they come over the uh, start finish strike once again it's Anwar Smith who leads he's built three tenths of a second now to Ed White in second then it's Sam Lukes after that double overtaking manoeuvre into hairpin two last lap around who sits in third Alex Jones defending fourth place now ahead of Chris Pebbody Pebbody looking to the inside into hairpin two and Ed White doing the same up ahead to Anwar Smith they're going to go side by side into the yeses you can't fit two alongside there and Ed White claims track position so Ed White back into the lead of this race then ahead of Anwar Smith it is still uh, Sam Lukes in third position with Alex Jones chasing again Ed White not getting the best of runs coming off Paddock Bend and while Smith not quite close enough to capitalise he's getting backed up at the moment into the path of Sam Lukes Alex Jones and also Chris Pebbody and uh, Pebbody ahead of Ryan Sandal with the top six now covered by one and a half seconds we come to the end of lap number five a new fastest lap of the race further down the order for Joe Bailey it appears that the leaders are slightly slowing one another at this stage going defensive down the inside line into hairpin one Sam Lukes he'll attempt to cover the inside into hairpin two as well they're side by side with Jones stuck up on the outside line and Chris Pebbody then will be able to come through into fourth position so plenty of jostling plenty of changing of positions but that's allowing Ed White and Anwar Smith to escape away ever so slightly as we head towards the five minute mark in this grand final White again 
not getting the best of runs coming off Paddock Bend. Smith urges White to move forward to break clear of the pack and then turn it into a two-horse race, but not so very likely. They're all fighting for track position as things stand. Again, White looking over his shoulder. Smith again urges him forward. Sam Lukes has closed right back in now towards the top two. And Chris Pebbody is bringing the rest of the group with him. Sandal, Jones and Joe Bailey now is with them. And Mark Mason not too far adrift either. The top eight covered by just two seconds. So Anwar Smith again signalling to Ed White, push on forward rather than going defensive because Anwar Smith knows that Ed White is backing him into the pack and it is a pack at that. They're side by side heading in towards the S's. I think that was Alex Jones trying to make a manoeuvre and uh, not sure if he quite managed to pull that one off but White certainly defensive at this stage of the race and Anwar Smith wants him to get a move on. Smith will go to the outside again in towards Garda. He'll look for the cutback coming off turn 10 but not able to get it and White still holding on to the race lead valiantly but he's now got Anwar Smith and Sam Lukes and Smith is starting to look a little bit frustrated in second position because he now knows that he's going to have to go defensive he's going to come under attack from behind a new fastest lap of the race from Sam Lukes that's because he had a little bit of daylight in front of him to uh, White and Smith not anymore he goes wide around the outside of uh, hairpin one Chris Pebbody though will be stuck on the outside going into hairpin two he tries to get back across but Alex Alex Jones has the inside and now has track position for P4. Still the pair of them side by side coming through the S's. But uh, I think eventually getting that manoeuvre made, Alex Jones Peverty by attempting the move on Sam Lukes for third position, put himself on the wrong portion of the track for uh, hairpin two. And the move has been made by Alex Jones. Still there side by side, further back down the pack. Ryan Sandal now attempting to recover, and I think he's done so for fourth position. So it's White versus Smith up front, then it's Sam Lukes, and then it is Chris Peverty directly in front of Ryan Sandal, who's got the better of Alex Jones. And uh, Jones losing out on a place is going to look to the inside into turn one. Can't quite get through there. Meanwhile, coming out of Henry's bend, Ed White again having to go to the inside line to hold off the challenge of Anwar Smith. Will Smith think about a bold move into hairpin two? No, again, it's defended on the inside line by Ed White. And now Smith gets almost gets the overlap in towards the S's, but once again being held back quite superbly by Ed White. It's defensive driving from the man who was certainly fastest during the heat stages. The winner of heat four, two second places during the heats as well. But in this one, he doesn't look to have the pace of Anwar Smith behind him, certainly at this stage of the race. Still a long way to go, 17 and a half minutes or so on the clock. It's White leading us from Smith and Sam Lukes right with the top two. Bit of a gap then to Peverty, still holding off Sandal in P5. And to Alex Jones, who has managed to remain ahead of the three-way fight behind that's seen Mark Mason come up into seventh position. Michael Whitaker into eighth. Joe Bailey now sits ninth with uh, Robin Kassam uh, rounding out the top ten. Again, Anwar Smith having to go defensive. He appears to be getting backed into the pack uh, unintentionally by Ed White, the race leader who's determined to hold on to track position. So it's still White who leads us from Smith as they come down the hill once again. Through the right-hander, the same sweep. Through the left-hander at Pullman's and through Paddock Bend. Still with Ed White defending. It's at that part of the track in particular that Anwar Smith appears to have the speed advantage. But he can't exploit it into Garda. White just creeping round the kerb at uh, turn 10. And that ensures that Smith is kept behind him. They now nose the tail for third position. Sam Luke's losing a bit of speed in the second half of that lap. And he's got Chris Peverty for company. The uh, number 14 cart that started in P6 is already up to P4. And now challenging to make a further manoeuvre. Luke's goes to the inside line to defend. Peverty can't get through there then. He'll attempt to make a move perhaps into hairpin two. Again, it's covered with a narrow run down the straight from Sam Lukes, who remains in third position. And still the top two can't quite manage to escape away. And still we've got just one and a half seconds covering our top seven. Michael Whitaker, having fought with Joe Bailey over the last lap or so, has dropped back slightly from the drivers directly in front of him as Anwar Smith swerves this way and that, looking for a way up the inside in towards Garda. Again, he's so much faster coming off Paddock Bend than Ed White, but just can't find a way through with the number 12 cart defending successfully to the inside line. We've got a real train now developing as we head towards the half race distance in this heavyweight A final. Ed White leads at the end of 
Lap 11, just two tenths of a second clear of Anwar Smith with Sam Lutz, Chris Peverty now coming up the inside to defend against Alex Jones. Jones can't get all the way around the outside to give himself the inside for hairpin two. Peverty still defending. Then it's Sandal, Mason, Whitaker, Bailey, all within two seconds of one another. The rest of the group some way tailed off from 11th position down, but the top 10 all still very much in contention for podium places with 15 minutes remaining. It looks as though Ed White has made the decision to finally get the hammer down and begin to push. Anwar Smith working hard to stay with him. White certainly had a bit of an advantage as they came down the hill towards Paddock Bend that time around. And he has still got a couple of cart lengths. Nothing more than that all race long ahead of Anwar Smith. And remember, White was pushed down to second place in the early stages. It's a new personal best from Ed White. So he's decided that now is the time to push and he builds half a second's advantage against Anwar Smith, who's got to defend against Sam Lukes from behind. Lukes in turn is holding off the challenge of Chris Peverty. Still Jones, Sandal and Mason right with them. Michael Whitaker getting dropped off ever so slightly as are Joe Bailey and Robin Kassam. But as I said, the top 10 still in pursuit. 14 minutes remaining here at Buckmore Park. Ed White settling into a nice rhythm here. Anwar Smith, who got the better of White in Heat 2. They were in the same group, these two, so they've met on three occasions already here this afternoon. And it is Ed White who's had the upper hand, 2-1 to one compared to Anwar Smith. He's looking set to make it three in the race that is the most important of them all, the grand final. Chris Peverty looking to the inside of Sam Lukes, catches him by surprise as they head up towards Conway's. He's still got the inside line coming off Henry's bend. It'll be a battle now into hairpin one, and Chris Peverty comes through nicely for third position. A bit of bumping and barging further back down the order as there was for third position as well. Smith now attempting to go with White, who's beginning to push. The fight for third place is holding back the rest of the group. A second now, the deficit for Sam Lukes and the rest of the group from third position down to Ed White, your race leader, and Anwar Smith now dropping three tenths of a second uh, in arrears. So he is further back than he was previously as well. Six tenths of a second now, the total deficit for him to try and surmount. Alex Jones making his way back through the pack quite nicely as we see them going side by side and fighting their three abreast on the way up towards Cafe Curb, which is never going to work. And they have to settle themselves into formation to have another go as this race goes on. As I said, Alex Jones making a good recovery. He gets the better of Sam Lutz and up into third position. Ryan Sandal with a new personal best on at lap 14 as he sits now in fifth place with Chris Peverty relegated down to P6. Joe Bailey, Mark Mason, Robin Kassam and Michael Whitaker rounding out your top 10. Three the S's once again. It's been a controlled, well-managed performance so far from Ed White. We head into the second half of the race and he leads it by just over half a second ahead of Anwar Smith, who certainly in the early stage of this race appeared to have all the answers to Ed White. But at this stage, I'm far less convinced that Smith is the man who is fastest at present. White certainly seems to have his rivals in the palm of his hand. Alex Jones in third. Then it's Sam Lutz. Starting to drop a little bit back from the top three loops as the field begins to spread out ever so slightly. New fastest lap of the race from Alex Jones, a 50.157, closing down Smith and White. But the top two not really fighting it out at this stage because there's still a couple of cart lengths between White and Smith. So Jones is really going to have to work for it if he wants to bridge that one second gap. Smith has certainly gained on White. It was only four tenths of a second the deficit at the end of lap 15. It looks to be less than that as they come in once again towards Sign Sweep and Pullmans with uh, White ahead of Anwar Smith, who's been making ground here, coming off Paddock Bend with a tighter line and then in the run towards Garda. And the two of them are nose to tail as they come through turn 10, but still clear of Alex Jones. And unless they start fighting amongst themselves, these two, they will hope to break clear of the number 11. Then there's a three-way fight for fourth position. Sam Lutz, Ryan Sandal and Chris Peverty as White begins to go defensive once again at the start of lap 17 to the inside line into turn one, keeping the inside coming off Henry's bend. Alex Jones is now right with them in the battle for the top two places. And we've got the top three qualifiers, the top three in points during the heat stages, now going at it for the podium positions. Jones on the inside of Smith as they came through hairpin two. Couldn't quite make it stick. Smith got the power down earlier around the outside line, extending track limits to the maximum with half a, half a cart over the white line to hold on for P2. White, Smith and Jones then going together as they come in towards Garda. Separate fight for fourth position. Still Sam Lutz defending valiantly against Ryan Sandal. But those uh, drivers from fourth position down really need to push on because the gap is now 1.3 seconds to the top three. 
three of them nose to tail for first position and likewise from fourth position down behind uh, Ryan Sandal and Chris Pebody. There's uh, a gap of one and a half seconds now to Joe Bailey from seventh position down. The rest of the drivers not able to keep up. And once again, the early pack has fragmented into a six driver fight. Joe Bailey will do his best to recover. Lost ground against Chris Pebody, Ryan Sandal and Sam Lukes up ahead. We watch the fight for the top three positions with 10 minutes remaining in the heavyweight A final. Ed White leads us. Anwar Smith in second position. Alex Jones going deep in towards Paddock Ben to try and get the run down guard towards Garda. Not able to do so for the moment at least. And Anwar Smith once again successfully defends. It's Ed White looking over his left shoulder as they come through turn 11 and up towards Cafe Curve. But uh, still no opportunity for the moment at least for any of Ed White's rivals to come through. And it's a new personal best lap last time around. That means that Ed White remains four tenths of a second clear of Anwar Smith, who's starting to have to defend himself. Alex Jones looking increasingly menacing as this race goes on. The winner of Heat 3 doing a good job here and attacking on the tail of Anwar Smith. He's got uh, two drivers to clear and less than nine and a half minutes in which to do it. Nose to tail as uh, Alex Jones encourages Anwar Smith forward. You're not going as fast as I want you to go, says Jones. And he sees Ed White beginning to break clear on this lap. Smith has been quick, though, through the second half of the lap and holds on for the moment for second place. White, Smith and Jones look set to be the three podium finishers then in the heavyweight class. Bit of a gap emerging. Two seconds now to Luke Sandal and uh, Pebody in the race for fourth position. Again, Smith having to go defensive as they get into turn number one. Jones not quite able to find his way through for the moment. Again, Smith defending. This time, Jones ducks to the inside into hairpin one and very sweetly makes the move. Then sticks to the inside line into hairpin two to ensure Anwar Smith can't come back through. And that is a really strong drive once again from Alex Jones. Last couple of laps, Anwar Smith dropping off the tail of Ed White into the path of Alex Jones, who desperately needed to clear the number nine card in order to go off in pursuit of the race leader, Ed White. Wide. Uh, coming off uh, Paddock Bend there. Alex Jones had to go to the inside line then to hold on ahead of Anwar Smith in that newly claimed second position. It's White, Jones and Smith. And those two fighting for second place are not doing one another any favours whatsoever at this stage. It's Ed White who's in control. Seven tenths of a second clear after 20 completed laps. Smith diving to the inside into turn one. That was a bold one. Jones forced up to the outside line into hairpin one. He's going to try the cutback. He'll be on the outside going in towards hairpin two. Will he duck back to the inside and try and get the speed on the way towards the S's? Yes, he will. He's got the overlap as well. He's on the inside here of Anwar Smith, who turns in and finds he's got another cut alongside him. Still there side by side as they come down the hill through the sweep. Anwar Smith holding on for that second position. Well worked in the first half of this lap from Anwar Smith. And Alex Jones on that occasion had to make the decision to give best because going side by side all the way through the first half of that lap was only likely to end in tears if he tried to maintain it at the bottom end of the circuit. So White once again over the last few laps really able to break away. Meanwhile further back down the order it's turning into a group fight once again from fourth position back. Joe Bailey having got the better of Chris Pebody for P6. So it's Luke's Sandal, Bailey, Pebody and Mike Smith all within a second of one another. And what a great drive that is from Mike Smith, who started it all the way back towards 18th position at the back of the grid, having finished fifth in the B final. He's up in eighth position in this set grand final. So good driving from Mike Smith. Watch out for him to see if he can make any further position gains in the remaining six and a half minutes of this grand final. I did suggest that Smith and Jones fighting it out over second place was only going to play into the hands of Ed White. And he's broken over one and a half seconds clear now. We're on lap number 22. Six and a half minutes, as I said, still to go. Jones almost up the inside of Anwar Smith coming towards Cafe Curve. Tough to make a move there. He might think about something into turn one, but he's not quite close enough. White then leads it by over two seconds. The largest the gap has been between the top two all race so far. And White settling into a nice rhythm. He was the pre-race favourite and he's well on his way to victory. The fight at this stage is over second with Anwar Smith defending to the inside line against Alex Jones. Jones has got the run off hairpin too, but he's not quite alongside. Smith once again claims the ground in towards the S's. Good fight going on further back from fourth position down. Sam Lukes now six seconds behind the race leader, Ed White. It doesn't look as though any of the drivers in that battle for fourth position are going to be able to get on the podium 
barring dramas up ahead in this fight for second place because the gap is set three and a half seconds now from third position down to fourth. White leads us from Smith, from Jones, then a big wait before the rest of the pack comes through. And I think it's Ryan Sandal back at the front of that group now for uh, fourth place. So Sam Lutz has uh, lost the position on this lap with Sandal coming through. And in fact, Lutz has been bundled towards the uh, bottom of that group. So it's Sandal, Smith, Bailey, Pebbity and Lutz now in the fight for fourth position. And Mike Smith once again gaining places. Smith defending against Jones, who still looks faster coming off that hairpin too but still can't find a way to exploit it. Smith has been defensive when he's needed to. But in the second half of this race, he hasn't had the answers to Ed White, and we never really got to see whether Alex Jones would be able to attack on the tail of the number 12 cart because Jones could never quite manage to clear Anwar Smith. Smith defending again into Garda, going a little bit too defensive there. Jones has managed to get the overlap. He's pushed out wide, though, by Smith and can't get through on the kerb. So Jones remains in third position and Anwar Smith raising his hands in frustration. I know what he's after. He wants Alex Jones to go with him and try and reel in the race leader, Ed White. But with the gap now over three seconds, I just can't see it happening. And these two look to be fighting it out for track position. Smith in second, defending to the inside. Jones goes deep into hairpin two. He'll go for the cutback. He's got a good line once again coming off hairpin two. But again, Anwar Smith has the power down early enough to come through in front heading towards the S's and from there it's single file down the hill towards the bottom and then the next main overtaking opportunity in towards Garda. Jones has set himself up for something but isn't quite close enough to Smith this lap around. Less than four minutes now on the clock. Ed White looking increasingly confident and comfortable out in the lead of this race and it's Smith versus Jones for P2. Great job from Mike Smith to get up into uh, fourth position. That really is a very strong drive indeed, having come through from the very back of the grid from the number 19 cart of Mike Smith. Chris Pebbity now getting through with uh, uh, Ryan Sandal relegated to sixth position and Sam Luke's hitting problems. He's gone all the way down to 13th position. So Luke's must have had an off somewhere on that previous lap to find himself not only out of that group, but actually relegated in towards the uh, group behind with uh, now just two seconds covering sixth place all the way down to 13th position. So fairly inevitable that once you uh, make an error or lose ground or get stuck up on the outside line, you're going to be freight trained by the uh, drivers directly behind you. And Sam Lutz has found that out to his cost. Rather unfortunate for the driver who started fifth on the grid. Still Smith ahead of Jones for second position. Mike Smith has broken well clear of the group behind in the fight for fifth place. So uh, Smith now an isolated P4. Very strong drive, as I said previously. Jones looking to the outside in towards Conway's. It'll give him the run off Henry's bend, but again, Smith defending to the inside into hairpin one. Sam Luke's making up one position as his recovery begins, but he's only got two and a half minutes in which to try and find his way through back into the top 10 of this heavyweight grand final. Ed White, three and a half seconds clear now of Anwar Smith, who's getting pushed down the hill by Alex Jones in towards Pullman's once again. Smith defending second position. Jones, will he start to get a little bit rattled? Smith has always been fast up Damon Hill and uh, in towards Garda. And uh, Smith defending that second position valiantly against Alex Jones directly behind. Nose to tail as they come up the hill now. Through towards Cafe Curve. Separate fight further back currently being led by Chris Pebbity over P5. Here's your race leader, Ed White, looking comfortable. 27 laps completed, almost four seconds the lead. The first half of the race, he was far from convincing, it must be said. He was passed at one stage by Anwar Smith. He couldn't shake clear of the number nine. And uh, the way he's gone in the second half of the race, you wonder whether that might not have been intentional for him to back up the pack, see them fight over one another for second position, and then uh, put the hammer down when he needed to and leave them to squabble it out over second place. Side by side now for that second position with uh, Anwar Smith losing out and attempting to fight back wide around the outside, Alex Jones. It's a thumbs up from Anwar Smith, who is seeded the position after the two of them uh, pretty much touched all the way down the hill, it must be said. And uh, once again, Anwar Smith recovering second place. Just over a minute now on the clock. Ed White comes in once again to start this time lap number 29. And uh, it looks as though we're going to get 30 laps, but no more than that for Ed White, our race leader. Five seconds now clear of Anwar Smith. He's counting down the laps and uh, quite soon he's going to be counting the money as well. Ed White is going to be your cash prize winner 
in the heavyweight final here at Buckmore Park. He leads comfortably ahead of Anwar Smith and Alex Jones still fighting for that second place. He'll be frustrated having worked well to get within a second of the race leader. White, Smith and Jones in that order in the early stages. But the number 11 cart could just never break clear of the number 9. Certainly using plenty of curb there as they came through Paddock Bend once again. Alex Jones though still unable to find a way past Anwar Smith no matter what he tries. He's going to have one more lap after this one. Last lap board has been shown to your race leader Ed White. 29 laps completed out of 30. He's just got to stay error free now for the final lap of this race. And he will be the Kart Race of Champions winner for 2020 in the heavyweight class. He's got more than the length of the straight in towards hairpin two. Ahead of Anwar Smith, who's still defending against Alex Jones. Jones still trying the cutback manoeuvre coming off hairpin two, but can't make it stick. White looking comfortable then, representing BRKC. He makes his way through the bottom end of the circuit. He's going to be the kart race of champions winner in the heavyweight class for 2020. Still nose to tail for second position. One last effort from Alex Jones, who's going to go wide into Garda. He's got the cutback. He'll be forced up to the outside line here by Anwar Smith. But up at the front of the field, Ed White wins the heavyweight class of the 2020 Kart Race of Champions. And his celebrations can now begin. Anwar Smith still holding on valiantly in the latter stages ahead of Alex Jones. And Mike Smith, what a drive that is from him to take fourth position here today. The separate fight from fifth place down, eventually won by Chris Pebody ahead of Mark Mason. And then it's Ryan Sandal, Chris Zakovic, Robin Kassam and Joe Bailey who round out the top 10. Sam Lutz uh, failing in his bid to recover a top 10 place. So he'll be disappointed having started up in uh, fifth position on the grid, eventually finishing in 11th place. But our top three finishers, as they started on the grid, you wouldn't have expected that the way they were going at it and fighting in the early running. The race controlled quite brilliantly by Ed White. And it's almost a lights to flag success. And while Smith coming through at one stage but couldn't maintain that top spot, White coming through and winning it by more than five and a half seconds at the chequered flag. White your winner ahead of Smith in second. Alex Jones completes the podium. On occasion looked like he might be able to get the better of Anwar Smith and come through for second place. Brilliant recovery drive through the field from Mike Smith to take P4. Chris Pebody rounding out your top five. But it's Ed White who'll be celebrating a comfortable victory for the man who was top scorer during the heat. And his second race victory of the day is the sweetest, the final in the heavyweight class. Many congratulations to Ed White taking the heavyweight title with a devastating drive to head home. Anwar Smith and Alex Jones and dominating the final for the heavyweight category here at the 2020 Kart Race of Champions. The lightweight classes began with Group 1 and a victory in the opening heat for Paul Gasson. The Club 73 driver displaying his good knowledge of the Buckmore circuits to head home Oliver Wedden and Luke Ide. Gasson, however, was unable to make progress from the back of the grid in Heat 2, and it was Club 100's Daniel Truman who held off the battling Sam Slater and Charlie Monk to take the win. It looked like Gasson would make it a double in Heat 3, as a late manoeuvre at the hairpin by fellow Club 73 man Josh Williams saw him snatch the victory. Tom Guest taking third as the rest of the pack fought hard further back, Truman this time finishing at the back. A fine three-way fight began Group 1 with Harry Chapman just heading home Tom Langford and Mark Puxty in their opening heats. But with these three at the rear of the grid for Heat 2, they had to fight among themselves as Joel Young beat Bradley Shepard home by half a second. The favourites were back at the front for the third heat and while Langford pulled away to attempt to top the scoring table, Chapman and Puxty had a great scrap for second place with the former prevailing. The rest of the pack were in a constant bunch behind the top three. Jack Goldsmith following up good top five results earlier by holding off a long train of cards for fourth ahead of Matthew Hill and Martin White, while Shepard and Young were stuck towards the back, showing how evenly matched most of the drivers were. It ended up ultra close in the point standings. Chapman at the top by a single point ahead of Langford and Gasson tied in second. A consistent Goldsmith in fourth ahead of Josh Williams with Slater, Ide and Puxty next. Daniel Truman's victory was just enough to get him into the top 15 and into the A final, but Charlie Monk missed out by a point. With only three drivers going through from the B final, action aplenty was assured, and a stunning three-way scrap for the win ensued. 
Charlie Monk did not get the break he wanted from pole position and was chased by Club 73's Alex Cass and Buckmore Park Car Club's own Alex Brazier. The trio were inches apart for most of the way. It could have gone any way in the closing stages, but Cass would prevail in a bumper-to-bumper -bumper finish with Brazier, Monk following them home to complete the A-final grid in a terrific race. The rest of the pack finishing well behind them. Winning margin testament to the great action, less than one-tenth in it and less than three-tenths in it back to third place as the grid was complete for the main event. Seven qualifying races completed, 30 drivers whittled down to 18 competitors for the grand final of the 2020 Kart Race of Champions. Look at the grid, two former Buckmore Park Junior drivers on the front row, Harry Chapman, the 17-year-old, and Tom Langford making his debut in the Kart Race of Champions. Row two, Paul Gasson, the reigning BP Pro Series champion, twice a Club 73 winner as well. He goes alongside Jack Goldsmith, the reigning Croc title holder, who failed to win any of his three heat races, but he's made it onto the second row of the grid through sheer consistency. Row three, Josh Williams, runner-up in the WTF1 GP here last season. He's less than two years karting under his belt, but did brilliantly to win heat five. Completing that third row, Sam Slater, representing the South England Rental Kart Championship. He was their runner-up in 2019. Row four, Luke Ide and Mark Puxty, a buck more regular. He was third in the 2018 GP League. Row five, Callum Jones and Ollie Smith. The latter won the 2019 BP Pro and finished runner-up in the 2019 Kart Race of Champions in the heavyweight class. He shed the pounds to step up into the lightweights and has been immediately on the pace. 18 drivers in total, including our top three from the B final. Seven of our 2019 finalists, including our top two from last year. 25 minutes on the clock. It's the lightweight final of the 2020 UK Kart Race of Champions. So the marshal moves away. Nervous moments for our drivers as they watch for those red lights to turn green. And we are racing here at Buckmore Park. Immediately, everyone will cut to the inside line to try and defend track position into turn one. It's our pole sitter, Harry Chapman, who leads the way. Tom Langford immediately into formation in second position. Sluggish getaway from the two drivers on the second row of the grid. Jack Goldsmith diving through into hairpin one to pick off Paul Gasson for third position. Good getaway for Sam Slater. He's shaken off Josh Williams to take fifth. Tried to get the better of Paul Gasson into hairpin two as well. But for the moment, the status quo is maintained. So it's Chapman who leads us from Langford in second. It's Goldsmith up into third ahead of Gasson. And it's Slater up ahead of Josh Williams. And Slater looks to the inside line as they come into Paddock Bend on Paul Gasson. Gasson goes right to the outside. And following him wide is Josh Williams. They're stuck on the outside line now at Garda. And both are going to lose further places. No problems at the front of the field for Harry Chapman and Tom Langford who are really getting their heads down and will lead us at the end of lap one. Jack Goldsmith has shaken off the chasing pack behind and now he can go off in pursuit of our race leaders. Fourth position down is a real dogfight. Sam Slater holds the place having been aggressive on that opening lap to get the better of Paul Gasson. Gasson's tumbled back down the order into eighth position. Luke Eyde, Mark Puxty, Josh Williams all in front now of Paul Gasson. Fight still going on for fourth position. In fact, I think Luke Hyde might have come back through on Sam Slater. So good battling, but they're all losing ground as the top three pull well clear. And Jack Goldsmith, who was over a second back from Tom Langford at the end of the opening lap, is certainly a lot closer than that now. Jack Goldsmith is the man on the move at present up in P3. We're watching the fight behind with Sam Slater having been picked off by uh, Luke Ide, who moves up into P4. Paul Gasson there has lost another position. So Gasson slots in now behind Callum Jones in ninth place. And Jones well back from uh, that uh, group directly in front of him. Four drivers pursuing fourth position at present. So it's Chapman who leads. Langford six tenths of a second behind is slipping into the path of Jack Goldsmith. Goldsmith for the moment at least making no ground on uh, Harry Chapman. Big old dive move down the inside there from Mark Puxty to try and take fifth position away from Sam Slater. Slater perseveres all the uh, way around the outside. Josh Williams tries to follow him through but gets bopped out. So still fifth position held by Sam Slater ahead of Mark Puxty and uh, Josh Williams and then a bit of a gap to the fight for eighth position back. Luke Hyde pulling clear then as Slater looks over his shoulder to defend into Garda. These three drivers fighting one another but really need to be working together to make up ground against Luke Hyde who looks over his shoulder. He's one and a half seconds back from the podium places as things stand. Remember it's winner takes all in this grand final. 
So there's not much use in scrapping it out for fourth position. They really need to be pushing on towards the podium places. Puxty diving for the inside line. Have the inside coming off Henry's bend. Will pursue down the inside into hairpin one. Josh Williams with smoke coming out of the tyres as he tries to get it stopped for that hairpin one. Has to allow Sam Slater back through so as not to get any warnings for uh, contact there. Certainly sideswiped. I think he came at them a little bit late and uh, eventually allowed Slater back through. But it's only into uh, P6 for Sam Slater with Josh Williams directly behind in seventh position. They come through Paddock Bend once again, nose to tail. Paul Gasson has managed to get back in front of Callum Jones and into eighth place. And he's managed to bring the pack with him onto the tail of this squabbling trio who currently are uh, racing for fifth place. Puxty on that lap then getting the better of Sam Slater up towards the head of the field, Jack Goldsmith has moved through on Thomas Langford, so that's for second place. Still nine-tenths of a second back from Harry Chapman at the end, though, of lap number four. So still work to do for Jack Goldsmith. It's Chapman in front of uh, Goldsmith. Then it's Langford. Then it's Ide. And then this fight directly behind for fifth position. Putsty on uh, the number 14 cart in fifth position, side by side for sixth place. Slater and Williams now dicing it out. And Gasson is going to try and take advantage as they come down the hill through the sweep. Through the left-hander at Pullman's. Gasson not quite alongside, but he's going to have the run, Pat, into Garda. Uh, defended well on the inside line by Josh Williams. So Gasson will have to think better of it and uh, slots in directly behind. Good racing going on as uh, Ollie Smith has now got in front of uh, Callum Jones. So that will be for ninth place. And still the group all together, all the way back down to uh, 12th position, covered by uh, just under seven seconds at the end of lap number five. Chapman then still clear. Gas on to the inside line, will finally make his move on Josh Williams. Williams uh, may lose out here to Ollie Smith. And in fact, it's Gasson who gets shoved up to the outside line and ends up losing a position. So Smith now up into eighth place. What a disastrous race this has been so far for Paul Gasson, the uh, reigning number two in the kart race of champions, who was third on the grid, eighth by the end of the opening lap, and now sits back down in ninth position once again. He was on the move. He was faster than the drivers directly in front of him as he gets uh, bundled wide somewhat there by Bradley Shepard. Shepard has the inside line into Garda. Look how wide he goes on Gasson, who's fourth to the escape route almost on the outside line. Had to go to the car park and buy a ticket to get back in. Callum Jones has come through in the process and Gasson is struggling now just to stay inside the top 10. Back at the front. This is the scrap for second position. Thomas Langford trying to stay with Jack Goldsmith for P2. And Goldsmith trying to reel in our early race leader, Harry Chapman. Chapman, the top scorer, of course, during the heat. He won heat two. He was the pro champion in the 2019 Club 73 series. He's got all the pedigree, and at the moment, he's got the all-important track position as well. Wide there as they came up Damon Hill, as Harry Chapman holds that race lead. Jack Goldsmith then under pressure still from Tom Langford. Hasn't really been able to shake him off, but has got enough breathing room to pick his own racing lines at very least. Then it's Luke Ide who sits in fourth place with uh, a bit of daylight in front of him as well. Almost two seconds, in fact, to Tom Langford in the battle for the podium places. Ide really needs to get his head down now and try and chase in on the tail of Langford for P3. But it looks as though he's more likely to have company from behind. Mark Puxty still with the traffic on his tail. The uh, pack beginning to filter through and beginning to spread out now as well. Still Paul Gasson outside of those top ten places. We see our top three, Chapman, Goldsmith, Langford in that order. Then it's Ide and uh, Puxty in the battle for fifth position with Sam Slater. Then it's Josh Williams, seventh place down with Ollie Smith and Bradley Shepard for company. Shepard doing a good job in the early running. Started 13th on the grid and is now up into P9 with Jack O'Neill rounding out the top 10. O'Neill started in P12. So Paul Gasson tumbling back through the order and Callum Jones has also lost a few positions. Smith right on the tail there of Josh Williams. Looks like he might be ready to make a move for seventh place. Settling down out in front with Langford now dropping eight tenths of a second back off Jack Goldsmith. New personal best lap last time around from Mark Puxty, who's going to try and reel in Luke Ide. He's got the gap now down to just a second to fourth position. The gap down at the front of the field as well. Harry Chapman struggling to defend it already against Jack Goldsmith, who might be looking to build up a move perhaps into Garda. He's not going to be able to do anything through Paddock other than set himself up for an attack in the closing stages of this lap number nine. Defending to the mid-track line, it's Harry Chapman. 
It's Goldsmith who has the momentum at this stage of the race. Less than a cart's length between the two of them. Will they battle one another and allow Thomas Langford back into the race for the top two positions? At the moment, Langford struggling to stay with our race leaders. Chapman defending into turn one. Goldsmith then will go for a tight entry to Henry's bend. Goldsmith coming through up the inside into hairpin one. Brilliant manoeuvre from Jack Goldsmith and somehow he manages to get it stopped on the apex and defend into hairpin one as well. He's done the same into hairpin two. And now he'll try and pull away as he signals to move forward with Harry Chapman to try and encourage Chapman not to squabble back up the inside line and fight for position, which would allow the pack to close back in. But for the moment, at least, it's Jack Goldsmith who has our race lead. Will Harry Chapman immediately be able to respond? Goldsmith looking over his shoulder there as they came into Garda. Has our race lead once again looking over his shoulder as he comes out of Garda. He knows he's got pressure as they come up the hill through Cafe Curve and most notably into turn one where a lap ago Jack Goldsmith made his move with a tight apex between one and two. Slotting up the inside of Chapman coming off Henry's bend. Chapman's not able to do the same to Goldsmith a lap later and again Goldsmith is signalling to the driver directly behind him Harry Chapman to try and to build speed, build pace and build the gap to the rest of the group. Thomas Langford has now begun to gain in ground on them. There's less than a second once again covering our top three and still then no to tell for top spot. There's a good manoeuvre there up the inside from Jack Goldsmith to wrestle the race leader away. He'd already made his move on Tom Langford and now he's made an inside move on Harry Chapman into hairpin one. Manages to get it stopped as well. Great job there from Jack Goldsmith to defend the race lead in the grand final of the Cup Race of Champions. Entertaining stuff then so far at the front of the field. Jack Goldsmith working his way through from fourth position progressively up to first in the opening 10 laps of the race. Harry Chapman immediately looking for a way back through, but Goldsmith is more than capable of defending as we saw when he made that initial pass on the inside of Harry Chapman. He wasn't caught by surprise by a cutback manoeuvre coming off hairpin one. Diving to the inside here, Harry Chapman not quite close enough into hairpin two. So uh, Goldsmith can't rest on his laurels at this stage. Chapman is well and truly on his tail and Tom Langford as well in at third position. Five second gap almost now to Luke Eide who sits in fourth place with uh, Mark Putsty for company and then a separate fight from sixth place down as uh, Sam Slater defends against Josh Williams and Ollie Smith coming through the field uh, very nicely indeed from uh, eighth position uh, at present. Jack O'Neill and Bradley Shepard rounding out our top ten. They've got Callum Jones for company. Paul Gasson has continued his tumble backwards. He's now out of contention for the title down in 14th place. And it's just a question of damage limitation for him. Mark Putsty coming through on Luke Eide on that lap number 12. And Sam Slater with a new personal best, best lap is starting to gain ground on the two in front of him as well. So we could well have a good fight on our hands for fourth position. But those uh, three drivers cut well adrift of our top three at present. Jack Goldsmith leading us from Harry Chapman in second. Tom Langford in third, still covered by little more than half a second, these three. And Harry Chapman, almost as if he's held on the tail of Jack Goldsmith by a piece of invisible string, has stayed well and truly right with him and closed up on him there as they came through Garda, almost nudging Goldsmith forward as they came off the bottom bend. Up the hill now once again. Separate fight further down the order. Putsty defending against Ide. And then you can see Slater looking a little bit isolated at present from Ollie Smith in seventh. But the most likely next overtaking manoeuvre is at the front of the field because Goldsmith is really having to defend here against Harry Chapman. New personal best lap from him, from Luke Ide and from Josh Williams further down the order as well. Good quality of racing, but it's a three-way fight for the podium positions at present. Goldsmith looking over his shoulder. Doesn't look entirely confident or comfortable at this stage of the race. And Chapman is going to try and make something happen here. Not able to do anything as they come down the hill through Paddock once again. Tom Langford well and truly back on their case now. He'll be in the mix. Wide into Garda, Harry Chapman trying to build up his speed for the race up the hill towards Cafe Curve. They are absolutely nose to tail now, our top three with Langford on the uh, back tyres of Harry Chapman. They come in towards turn number one. Goldsmith will have to defend the inside line. Still over half of this race to go. That's not uh, the time to go defensive, but track position is key. Goldsmith determined to defend it. Langford goes wide, wants the cutback. He'll have the outside line though now into hairpin two, and Chapman once again can defend second place. Looks as though it's all gonna kick off at any moment though for these top three places. Just three tenths of a second between them as they came over the start-finish line to start lap number 15. Goldsmith in front, 
Harry Chapman directly on his tail. And then Tom Langford in third. Again, Goldsmith defending to the inside line. They're going to go three abreast here into Garda. Langford stuck on the outside, can't find a way through. But each time Goldsmith defends successfully to the inside, the three of them are backing one another up. And Mark Putsty is the uh, driver on the move at this stage of the race, bringing Luke Eide with him. If these three aren't very careful indeed, they could have company in the closing stages. The gap now down to less than four seconds between Langford in third and Putsty in fourth as Goldsmith again defends to the inside line into hairpin one. They're side by side again for second. Langford signals forward, gestures to Jack Goldsmith. Get your head down. Puxty is now on the same straight as our lead trio as they uh, come in towards the S's in the battle for fourth position. The top three are heading down the hill. Goldsmith in front on the number four. And it's the 11 of Harry Chapman and the two of Tom Langford. Langford looking swift as they come down the hill, but no opportunity to come through into Garda. Again, Goldsmith places his cart absolutely perfectly to defend that race lead. Then you see Puxty and Ide still in contention, not out of it just yet. Bit further back, Sam Slater doesn't look as though he's going to be able to do anything about those top five positions at present. And Ali Smith not able to go with the pace of the top six either. Goldsmith still determined to defend into hairpin one. So you wouldn't have expected that it was the stage of the race where drivers would be uh, robustly defending track position. But it is indeed. Jack Goldsmith is working hard to hold on to uh, P1 ahead of Harry Chapman and Tom Langford in third and again Mark Puxty making ground on that last lap 3.4 seconds now is his gap to the race leader and uh, less than three seconds to Tom Langford in third so good progress being made by the drivers in fourth and fifth positions all that they can hope is that Jack Goldsmith continues to bottle up the pace of the race out front Goldsmith is not picking the optimum racing line He's picking a defensive racing line. He's going to have to do so again here in towards Conway's at the start of lap 17. Goldsmith does go defensive. Chapman tries to sweep up to the outside line, see if he can get the speed coming off Henry's bend. I think he even nudged Jack Goldsmith there as they came off turn two. Goldsmith looks over his shoulder as if to say, what are you doing there, bumping into the back of me? But he knows the game and Goldsmith is defending to the inside line pretty forcefully and that is leaving Chapman with no option but to almost move him forward just to hold on to second place. Langford now trying to find a way through as the three of them push forward at the front of the field. Puxty again making ground on lap number 17. Jack Goldsmith looking over his shoulder. This time he's got enough in hand to take the wide sweep into Garda and have the speed and momentum coming out of Garda and up the hill up towards Cafe Curve once again. Less than 10 minutes remaining in this race now, and with every passing minute, Jack Goldsmith moves one step closer to a second consecutive victory in the kart race of champions. Goldsmith, your leader. Multiple Sodi world finalist, twice and reigning Club 73 karting champion, Jack Goldsmith out in front. Took this title by a narrow margin over Paul Gasson, of course, in 2019. And again, he's having to defend for it. He drove superbly to keep Gasson behind him last season. Can he keep Harry Chapman behind him here? Having picked off Chapman in the early stages, Jack Goldsmith has certainly looked back, but uh, metaphorically speaking, he hasn't done so because he has managed to retain top spot since then. Goldsmith this time will defend into Garda. Chapman will look to the outside again, but he's got to be careful here not to allow Langford up the inside. He has done so. Langford gets through for second place. Again, he signals Chapman to push on forward. But both drivers are trying to force a mistake from Jack Goldsmith. And so far, none has been forthcoming. Langford then will now have a go at Goldsmith. Chapman failed. Can Langford succeed where the number 11 failed in the first half of this race? Harry Chapman, the pole sitter, top point scorer during the heat, has been pushed down into third place. And look at Mark Puxty now, just one and a half seconds back from the race lead. He must feel that his chances are in. He's the man with the momentum and he's bringing Luke Hyde with him. Goldsmith might have to uh, get a move on at some stage in this race or this is going to be a real group fight. And once it turns into a pack, you never know what might happen. We'll have freight train passes and all sorts in the final eight or so minutes. Wide into Garda, Tom Langford gives up that second place. Chapman comes back through. So again, Chapman will lead the chasing group, but look at Puxty making up ground from fourth position. Then it's Luke Hyde. Good fight going on for sixth position. Slater has dropped back into the path of Josh Williams and to Ollie Smith on the tail of that group as well. Further back down the order for ninth position, all the way down to 13th place. There's just half a second. We pick them up now. Five drivers scrapping and swapping over P9. Bradley Shepard has the inside line and has that ninth place for the moment. Alongside him, it's uh, Daniel Truman as they come into hairpin one. Truman's moved out of the way by Shepard, who's defending. 
and uh, Jack O'Neill will try and get all the way around the outside. It's a long way to go, though, on the outside of Hairpin 2, and Truman's going to have his work cut out here just to hold on to position. O'Neill does uh, come through, uh, but it's, I think, Oliver Wedden there who has made a position, and Callum Jones is well and truly in touch from 13th place also. Harry Chapman, having picked off Tom Langford a lap ago, is still on the tail of Jack Goldsmith. There's still three drivers in the fight for sixth place. Slater, Williams and Smith, and then still five drivers in the fight for ninth. Bradley Shepard holding back that group for the moment at least, but they're seven seconds back from the three-way fight for P6. And in fact, uh, Bradley Shepard has now been picked off. So coming through to the front of the group, it's Oliver Wedden, who I said last lap was on the move. Well, he's now up into ninth place. Daniel Truman defending the inside line against uh, Jack O'Neill, who's come through on uh, Bradley Shepard in the early stages of this lap 22. And Jack O'Neill keeping a watching brief, in fact, now gets alongside Bradley Shepard as they uh, come down the hill and towards the S's. They're side by side. Shepard will have the inside for the exit of the chicane and holds on for at least one position in P11. It's not the P9 he held in the early stages. Up at the front of the field, we've now got a five-driver battle for the lead. It's Goldsmith from Chapman, from Langford, from Puxty, from Ide, and there's less than a second covering the top five. This is still the group for ninth position down. It looks as though Wedden's built a bit of a gap now for Daniel Truman behind. Truman uh, setting the pace. O'Neill picking off Bradley Shepard on that last lap to come through for 11th position. So Shepard tumbling backward through the order and Callum Jones is now going to have a go at Bradley Shepard into hairpin one. Jones makes the move. Shepard tries to run it all the way out onto the red paint to give himself the inside line for hairpin two. And Shepard has done well there to hold on to that 12th place. But all the while, the two of them are tumbling back from the group and it does look as though Shepard is struggling to keep up with the pace in the second half of the race. Just over five and a half minutes remaining and it is still uh, the status quo maintained at the head of the field. Jack Goldsmith leading Harry Chapman. Then it's Tom Langford, Mark Puxty and uh, Luke Ide. Ide has now got through on Puxty at the end of uh, lap 23. Meanwhile, in the secondary group that I was talking about earlier on, Josh Williams has now picked off Sam Slater. Three and a half seconds back, Josh Williams from the race lead and two and a half seconds back from the top five. So at, at the moment, it looks as though we've got a five driver fight for those podium positions in the remaining five minutes or so. Still defending Bradley Shepard valiantly in that 12th place. He's a little bit ragged through hairpin one. Callum Jones will have the cut back, but he can only find Shepard in his path. This is the fight for 12th position, as ever in the kart race of champions. Good battles right the way through the field. Matthew Hill and Alex Brazier scrapping it out over at 14th position behind, but they're not going to figure on the podium, these uh, drivers further back down the order, as uh, Oliver Wedden gets some encouragement from the uh, front bumper of Daniel Truman trying to push him forward and Truman looks as though he's clearly faster than Wedden at this stage sweeping left and right to try and find a way through costing himself time most probably going for inopportune overtaking attempts and it's Jack O'Neill who's closing in on the pair of them new personal best lap last time around for O'Neill who fancies a place inside the top 10 we're still watching the scrap for 12th position Bradley Shepard versus Callum Jones and uh, still less than a second covering our top five at the head of the field Goldsmith Chapman, Langford, Ide and Puxty staying in those positions. Just seeing ahead, Wedden struggling to defend. We're back with the front runners. Goldsmith in front of Chapman, still looking over his shoulder to defend. Well, was it a wise move from Goldsmith to back up the pack, whether intentionally or not, to bring Luke Ide and Mark Puxty into the race? We may even have Josh Williams and Sam Slater gaining ground in the latter stages. Again, Chapman thinking about a manoeuvre coming off Henry's bend. He built it up into turn one. Goldsmith swerving around on the inside line to defend that place. And look at that for a manoeuvre. Oh, it's a big one from Luke Ide, who runs Harry Chapman off the circuit altogether. They're three abreast in the battle for second position. Langford has missed out in that altogether. He's gone to the back of the group now into P5. So disaster for Tom Langford. They come back down the hill. That's Puxty on the inside line. Mark Puxty in the number 14 cart fighting Harry Chapman. Chapman's managed to get back through into second place, but this is a perfect opportunity for Jack Goldsmith to put in a sprint finish. Three minutes to go, and the fighting behind him for second place may have given Jack Goldsmith the golden opportunity now to pick his racing line and break clear. Chapman back up into second place ahead of uh, Mark Puxty, who's now dropped down to fourth position. Luke Hyde is up into P3. We've got a real group of six drivers now separated by just under two seconds, but a second clear Jack Goldsmith out in front. Puxty diving for a place on the podium, picks off 
Luke Eyde for P3. Tom Langford at the back of that group now, two seconds behind from the race leader. It looks as though it's going to be a two-driver fight. Up to Harry Chapman to get his head down and try and chase in on the tail of Jack Goldsmith. Fight behind, good driving from Mark Puxty who was the man on the move, of course, at the mid-race phase, who gained in ground on the drivers in front of him. Runs wide there, Puxty, at uh, the end of Paddock Bend, and still somehow manages to stay in front of Luke Eye. That's for third position. Then behind those two, it's Tom Langford, relegated to P5 last lap around. What a disappointing lap for him. And it does enable Jack Goldsmith and Harry Chapman to pull clear out in front. Seven tenths of a second is the race-leading margin for Jack Goldsmith. Can he defend that in the remaining two minutes here at Bucknell Park? Puxley defending third place. This is the uh, battle behind. Goldsmith, though, hasn't got the pace to pull clear of Harry Chapman, so it does look as though we're going to have a fight to the finish. Goldsmith defending from Chapman. Separate fight for third as things stand. Puxley, Ide, Langford, Williams, even Ollie Smith not out of contention for a top three place. He's done well to recover ground with Sam Slater being brought forward with him. Eight drivers separated by just three seconds as they fight it out for P4. Defending it's Luke Eye. Tom Langford trying to find his way back through. Langford defended against successfully through Garda by Luke Eye. One and a half minutes now on the clock. Still Langford trying to get to the front of that group to see if he can bridge the gap and at least challenge for a podium place. Langford, remember, was the second highest point scorer. He was the winner of a heat six, but I can't see him getting there. It's Goldsmith out in front still with Chapman on his tail. This lap and most probably one lap more for Goldsmith to defend. He's been defending for the majority of this race, Jack Goldsmith, and he's done so with aplomb. Then it's Puxty. He's got a bit of breathing room to Luke Eide behind him. Eide so preoccupied with defending against Langford, he hasn't been able to keep the pace with Puxty for P3. Less than a minute on the clock now. Chapman eyeing up a manoeuvre. He went wider into Paddock Bend to see if he could build up his momentum for Garda. Goldsmith defends to the inside. Chapman's going to have to be ruthless here in the closing stages because nobody has been able to penetrate the defences of Jack Goldsmith. It's going to take something special from Harry Chapman. We're in now to the final lap of the 2020 Kart Race of Champions. Harry Chapman needs to make his move, but where can he strike? They come off Henry's bend, tied together almost. Goldsmith has the inside. Chapman around the outside. He'll help the cut back. It'll leave him exposed on the outside line, though, for hairpin two. So he slots back in, waiting for a mistake from Jack Goldsmith that so far hasn't come through the S's. Mark Puxty now is right back up with them as well. It's a three-driver fight between the most likely podium trio. They come down the hill in towards Paddock Bend for the last time. Then it's the straight on towards Garda, the best of the remaining passing places. Goldsmith defends to the inside line. Harry Chapman will go wide. Puxty dives through down the inside for second place. Mark Puxty though forced to the outside line. Side by side as they come up towards Cafe Curve. There's nothing to separate our top three. And Jack Goldsmith for a second season in succession wins the kart race of champions. Still unbeaten in the lightweight category. Jack Goldsmith wins for a second year in a row. A fine defensive drive throughout that race. He came through from fourth to first and held back the pace of the race. Managing things superbly. Defending down the inside line quite brilliantly. Chapman could find no way through. Langford earlier in the race could find no way through either. And Mark Putsty putting in a brilliant drive as well from eighth on the grid to come through for a place on the podium. Fine racing here at Bucknell Park. It is Jack Goldsmith who wins it ahead of Chapman and Putsty. A separate look further back down the order at how the other battles finished. Fourth place held in the closing stages by Luke Eide, who successfully defends against Tom Langford, relegated down from second at one stage to fifth position in the end. Sam Slater, Ollie Smith and Josh Williams all with the pack from fourth position down to eighth, covered by less than a second at the checkered. Ninth place going to Daniel Truman. Good effort from him at the front of a group that also incorporated Oliver Wedden, Bradley Shepard and Jack Neal, as well as Callum Jones slipping back through the order. Matthew Hill, Alex Brazier, Alex Cass, Charlie Munn, and eventually Paul Gasson retiring from the race on lap number 12. So 17 finishers in the A final in the lightweight class of the 2020 Kart Race of Champions, won once again by Jack Goldsmith. A quite superb race to finish off the day here at Buckmore Park here at the 2020 Kart Race of Champions. Congratulations, Jack Goldsmith, on taking the lightweight title. That just about wraps things up here today. We'll see you next year.